Hey guys, Josh Culler here, the host of the Good Success Podcast. Hey, I'm just dropping in here to let you know that we are giving a free book away. Yes, a free book called Active Turnkey, The Best Way to Buy Rentals by Tom Olson himself, the president of Good Success. Um, Yes, I did say we are giving it away for free. All you got to do is go to goodsuccess.com slash ATK book. Again, that's goodsuccess.com slash ATK book as an active turnkey. And uh, we're going to cover the book. So we're going to actually pay for the book and give it to you for free. We're just asking you to cover shipping costs, which is very minimal compared to the value that you're going to be getting in the book. So if you are interested in learning how to create financial freedom with real estate, go get your copy now. Again, that is goodsuccess.com slash ATK book. Thank you for listening to the Good Success Podcast, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome back to the Good Success Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Culler, and today we have the brand ambassador from Kansas City. Is it Missouri or Kansas City, Kansas? Missouri. Missouri. That's what I thought. I had that written down, but I just wanted to make sure. So we've got John Wiley, the brand ambassador of Think Realty, which you guys know Think Realty, of course. We're um, at like almost pretty much every single event that that they have. And then also we're in their Think Realty leadership circle, which um, John has a big part of as well. So we're excited to have John on the podcast today. John, what is going on? How you doing, my friend? I'm, I'm living large here in beautiful Kansas City, Missouri, and just thrilled for the invitation to be on and chat with you and, and uh, just see where the conversation goes. Awesome stuff. So John gave a, so he actually came to our mastermind in November, uh, the, the one that we had in Miami. And John, as his share, gave a little bit of a talk about loving your enemies, loving your competitors, and just kind of a different point of view than what most people look at it as. And because, because, you know, of course, scripture says, love your enemies, but do we translate that? We, you know, personally, but also into business. And he really gave an interesting point of view on that. So we're actually going to have him talk about that a little bit today, but John has a very vast experience in real estate in general. So we're going to tap into his mind for that specifically, uh, but we're going to come right back to that in just a second. But before we get into it, if you guys haven't already, make sure you have subscribed to the Good Success Podcast. We're on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, all the podcast platforms. Just go to the platform, search Good Success. Make sure you subscribe there and then leave us a review if you're able to. We would love to hear your feedback on these podcast episodes. And if there's anybody that you think we should interview, reach out, let us know. You can email podcast at goodsuccess.com. That'll actually come to me. So we would reach out to a person if you have a suggestion. And then the mastermind, which John Wiley was actually at, like I said, in November, that was a few weeks ago. Um, we should be in right after Thanksgiving right now when this is airing. So, uh, John, what did you think about the the mastermind? Good stuff. Good group of people. It was great. So, and, and it, it doesn't hurt to be in, you know, Miami in November. And, <laughs> right. Absolutely. And I, and I dodged some bad weather back in Kansas city, but actually, uh, being in the mastermind, I was, uh, you know, the, the people that were there shared freely. Uh, there was good exchange. It just, it was a great group. The, uh, just the the ethos that is created there uh, made it easy to share and uh, be comfortable, even with some of the ideas you mentioned that I brought out a different way of looking at something. Sure. Sometimes you go into a group, there's resistance to yeah. new new ideas. It was uh, you know readily received, and uh, yeah, it was, it's a great group. I highly recommend it. Awesome stuff. We appreciate that. But um, so we had the November mastermind, like you said, in Miami. And John, when we ca- I don't know what it was like in Kansas City, but when we flew back, we had a red eye flight coming back home from Miami, and it was 80 degrees when we left, and it was 25 when we landed in Chicago. Same thing in Kansas City. Uh, it was horrible. I, I, have, I had the benefit. I had the benefit of getting to fly from Miami to Irvine, California. Oh, okay. So I missed the whole thing. <laughs> oh, that man! Lucky you. Half of our half of our team got wiped out by some kind of a cold. I had strep throat. Like it was just. Oh, it was not good. But, oh, that tells me where I caught it. Because by the time I got to Irvine, I was so sick. Man, <laughs> seriously. Uh, I, I caught picked up something in Miami. Now I know where welcome. I got it. you It's all about giving and sharing, sharing the love. You know. But anyway, yeah, yeah, so our next event is in February, February 4 through 8. We're going a full week now. We're splitting the group into two groups, and that is going to be in Dallas, Texas at the Quest Trust Company's uh, office down there in Dallas. So if you guys are interested, go to goodsuccess.com slash mastermind to learn more about that. We would love to chat with you. Fill out the application there, and then either myself or Tom Olson, president of Good Success, will get 
back to you and kind of vet you through that because like John said, we got a great group of people and we have a great culture that we've built around that. And we very, very much value that. So that's why we jump on the phone call with you and just chat it, chat it out. We do want to know what your business is like because we don't want just newbies in the, in the room, you know, that kind of thing. But we also vet the type of person that you are because we love our culture. So goodsuccess.com slash mastermind is where you can learn more about that. And then the active turnkey book, we still have a few of these available. Best way to buy rentals by Tom Olson himself, the president of Good Success. And I think this one, yep, this one is signed. So if you guys order these books, then you will get a signed copy. This is absolutely free. So all you have to do is go to atkbook.com and pay for shipping and handling. That's all you got to pay for. And then we're going to get the book out to you for free. And then you get a nice little follow-up email with a bunch of other packages. We have a couple eBooks. We have the, the first chapter of this book in audiobook, some wallpapers, it's great stuff. So for free, you can get that book. Again, that's atkbook.com. If you're on the Facebook premiere video right now, we'll have everything linked in the the, the comment section there. Um, and then Community Go-Giver tickets are already available. We actually have a couple of people that are coming from Think Realty and then other uh, affinity companies like NREG is going to be there and then um, a couple others. So we're excited about the community go-giver event happening next summer, June 26, 27, 28. We got a really good speaking lineup. More details to come, but if you're interested, you can get early bird pricing right now. Save a couple hundred bucks. Go to communitygogiver.com to learn more about it. And that's it for us. So let's get into the interview. John Wiley. I'm excited about this. John, I've known you since I think Dallas of this year's Think Realty event is the first time I actually um, last year. Oh, it was last year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Man, it's so. Where's time gone <laughs> in the world? Like so, um, John is just a stand-up guy, and every time I meet him, I'm learning more and more um, about not just like real estate or the industry, business or anything, just life in general. Such such wisdom that this guy can bring to the table. So, John, do me a favor, and for the people that don't know who you are, I know we have a lot of listeners that are actually. Um, involved with Think Realty in some way, shape, or form. Give us a brief introduction, a little bit about your background in real estate and then currently what you're doing now. Okay, well, my background in real estate, I, I got into the real estate market about 2008, 2009, which was a great time to get in. If you'll remember back in there, the, the bottom was you know down and you know the mortgage fiasco, it just happened. I came in uh, not knowing you know about cycles. So I was buying property for pennies on the dollar. And I thought, man, it's easy to be successful doing this. <laughs> my, my harder lessons came later. Sure. But uh, so I've been doing this a while. I accumulated a nice uh, buy and hold portfolio in partnership with my father to help him with his retirement. And uh, I intentionally moved into the inner city of Kansas City uh, to help provide uh, really upscale uh, rentals for low income families. And I, I learned the hard way how to survive in that demographic. So lots of stories, some crashes and burns, and some some successes along the way. Sure. And uh, here recently, in the last uh, year or two, I've I've really turned up the uh, flipping side of my uh, expertise here in Kansas City, and helping people out of you know like out of state in California, various areas around the country, invest in Kansas City. I do JV deals with them on flipping. And uh, yeah, you know, I've been doing construction since I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. So I've just got this, you know, lifelong uh, understanding of single family residences and construction. And then I've built a few successful organizations in my adult life doing team building. Today, I get the privilege of serving as one of the brand ambassadors for uh, Think Realty. So I get to travel around the country talking to investors, learning a lot, sharing when I can and uh, making them aware of all of the great uh, ways you can on-ramp through education, uh, through member benefits with Think Realty, and many of your listeners are already aware of, of those benefits, but that's kind of what I do in a nutshell. There's a lot more, but that's the very brief description. Sure. We, John, you need to write a book about your, just your life in general, because <laughs> you got, a, you have a lot of stories. Even the first time that I saw you speak, you talked about your relationship with you and your dad and that whole backstory. And man, that was, that was very, very encouraging, very, very much um, appreciated. It's emotionally to hear that. moving right. uh, story. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> we love it. And, and it was so surprising too, because he talked about this, this relationship. I don't know, maybe you want to get into it. I don't know, but um, he, he talked about his relationship with his dad and uh, I know me and Kevin were sitting next to each other in that room and we saw this random guy walk in and we're like, who's this guy? We haven't even seen him the first couple of days or whatever at, at the leadership circle. And then 
um, all of a sudden you said, this is my dad. And we're all like, what? That's awesome. <laughs> so it's a great story. Great story. Um, yeah. but anyway, so let's talk about a couple of things first before we get into the main topic of the interview today. So the river of refuge, can you just give a brief synopsis of what happens with that? What, what your involvement is with that, um, that area of your life. And I, I'm excited about it, but I don't want to butcher the whole story. So go ahead. Well, uh, along the way of my journey, uh, part of what I've done is I spent about 30 years uh, pastoring different churches. Most of them were startups. I learned uh, at a young age, meaning young being 19, 20 years old. I never grew up in church. I never went to church. But as, uh, as I got into my early 20s, I, I learned something about spirituality, and that was really simple. Love attracts a crowd when there's real love, not the conditional I love you if you line up with what I believe, mm. but the unconditional aspects and the characteristics of what love looks like attracts a crowd. So consequently, churches would pop up around me. And the third time around, while I was in Kansas City, uh, another church popped up uh, and I always have been involved in other things and helped pastor uh, communities. And uh, out of the, out, the outflow of one of those churches that popped up here in Kansas City, I had noticed, uh, a school bus stop one day and about six elementary age children got on a school bus in front of a pay by the week motel, which really bothered me because that meant they must get off the bus at this motel. And if they get off the bus at this motel, they must live here. Hmm. Now I knew enough about that motel to know, you know, it's, it was a rough spot. Sure. So anyway, that moment led to three years before the river of refuge was even born for three years. I advocated with, some of my friends are, that were with me in that church, we advocated to sponsor families out of these pay by the week motels, one family at a time. Here's why. We found out that these families who go to work every day and have jobs, because you, if you're in a pay by the week motel, you have to pay the rent that week. Hmm. There's no, like if you don't pay it, then you're evicted, sure. right? But we found families that have been living in these motels for five years, wow. paying the rent every week, wow. which you said to yourself, are you a knucklehead? Move out, get a rent, you know, go, go get a house, you know, for the same price. But what we found out was they get trapped paying the high rent rates that are the same as a house payment, but then they can't save first month's last month's security deposit. So we started sponsoring them out and matching funds one at a time, awesome. which led three years later to one day I was driving down the road, saw a vacant hospital by Arrowhead Stadium. I was very well aware of it. It'd been vacant 10 years. It went vacant while I was on city council formally and I knew about it. And I said to myself out loud in the truck, somebody ought to buy that hospital for all the families, meaning these families we've been helping. I didn't get 30 seconds down the road and I knew that was me. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I approached the owners of this $16 million complex, formerly worth 16 million. They were selling it for three. I offered a million dollars, uh, no down payment, no guarantee, sell me your hospital for a million dollars and I wanna use it for these families. And I explained to them the program and they said, yes. Mm -hmm. It took seven years to get it open. We raised the money, we paid it off. We rehabbed the entire thing. And today there are beautiful three and four and two bedroom fully furnished apartments in this former hospital where families who are in this condition can move in as long as they have two things going on. They have to have a job and they have to be willing to open a bank account and make weekly deposits to themselves that we verify that lets them save that money and graduate and get out. And so it's a wonderful program. Uh, I think at any given time, we have 30 to 50 children living in residence with their families. It's not permanent, it's temporary. They come, they live, they get eat, they, they live and eat for free and we help them, we budget their money, teach them life skills, and then they graduate and get into stable housing. That's everything in a nutshell. There's a lot that goes on around that. I'm the founder, I'm still on the board. I stepped way back because we have an amazing team that runs that. And now I give a lot of my focus and attention to uh, developing the brand and making brand awareness in real estate and mentoring others to learn how to do what I do in Kansas City. Sure, that's so incredible. And I, I love the I love the concept too, because it's a lot, it reminds me a lot of, um, and you know Ken Lacey from Veterans Path Up, and you're yeah. giving people a hand up instead of a hand out. And that's that's, Veterans Path Up, whole mantra, but yeah. We partner with them. Sure. Imagine when they graduate six to eight months, they've saved their own money. Like that's their yeah. money they saved. We didn't just write them a check. Sure. So there's this ownership that comes with it. And then we advocate for them after they graduate and we help promote, you know, we watch over them for a couple of years and make sure they're stable. There's just a lot that goes on. Have an amazing staff there. If anybody wants to learn more about it, 
It's riveroprefuge.com. And uh, there's even some documentaries that were done on the acquisition that are attached to my life story that have been featured on the 700 Club with Pat Robertson. There's lots of cool videos that go back 10 years ago to how it even was acquired and all the miracles that happened and the money that poured in just so that thing could happen. It's been a community effort, not a John Wiley effort. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. I love that. So question here about that, that I, I don't know if you're ready for this, but um, is, is this something that you, this is like the one thing that you have, or do you have plans on expanding this into other markets or maybe even other sides of the city or whatever? Well, that, that facility will handle, uh, will handle Kansas city, right? Gotcha. Uh, really, I, I, I have no plans to do that. Uh, I, all I was doing was noticing what's happening in my community sure. and responding to who was in front of me, which I have an entire talk for another time. If you want to have me back, well, we can have a podcast just about learning to notice it. Cause learning to notice is key to success. That's awesome. Noticing who is in front of you and where are the gaps? And there's a way to teach yourself to notice. And I can take you through that sometime. That's not the conversation we're going to have in a little while, but, and it's, it's a really simple that caused me to notice and respond. And so while I don't live in Chicago or Cincinnati, I, I can't respond to what's in front of me, but I right. can respond to what's in front of Kansas city. I love that. That's awesome. That that's such a good statement. Yes. We're going to have you back because just that statement, learning to notice is the key to success. That's man, that that's a great statement. Um, okay. So what, what, but what you do with what you notice, noticing isn't enough, but it's the first step. action, taking <laughs> action, doing something massively as Tony Robbins says. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, oh, cool. So we're, we'll definitely, I'm going to get it, get it scheduled. We'll have you back to talk about this and possibly even for the great. community go giver event, because I don't know if you're open to that and I'm kind of making it available right now, but um, I think that would be awesome because the community go giver event is all about your community. So for us specifically, we're in Gary, Indiana. It's about flipping the city of Gary, but we bring people in that are in other yeah. markets to make impacts on their markets. So yeah. that's, that's fantastic. Very cool. So let's move on from that, but I, that's amazing. You guys already a bunch of nuggets that are going into that. So fix and flipping. So let's talk yeah. about that a little bit. Sure. Because I know it's something that you enjoy very much. So first of all, why do you enjoy it very much? Why is it something that you love doing? How is the market where you're at Kansas City? Um, so talk a little bit about that. Well, the market here in Kansas City is great, right? There's lots of distressed inventory still available and a big demand for housing. So those two things together create wonderful opportunities if you buy right. Uh, why do I enjoy it? Sometimes I ask myself that when there's difficulties. <laughs> But really the reason I enjoy it so much is for me personally, it's a form of art for me. I, I get personal fulfillment and enjoyment out of taking something that's distressed and making it functional and beautiful and bringing it back to service again at a value for a neighborhood or a community or family. So I love to go in and just be creative with every flip. I don't do high end executive, you know, uh, flips. I do, uh, blue collar, middle of the road, where there's a high demand. But I just love the art of flipping. And uh, it has a certain amount of uh, complexities. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot of lessons along the way, sure. some crash and burns, but uh, that's why uh, it's profitable. Uh, I do JV partners uh, and uh, I, I, I just love the whole process and have some great friends I've created over the years and some mentors that, uh, I, that have, I've mentored in Kansas City that are actually and this is, they're excelling in my, in what I've taught them. They've awesome. gone with and beyond. And so consequently around me is a great team and, and lots of creativity. Sure. So you say you've learned a lot of lessons. What are a couple of lessons that you've learned that you could share with us? I, I, okay. So it's all about property management. If you're doing any buy and hold, okay. like, cause out of, it's a good principle for success that, you know, just flipping only is, is a train wreck. Mm -hmm. You need, you know, like I, my view is you need a balanced portfolio flip when the market is ready for flipping. Don't just flip. If you're, you know, fighting the market, get out. But, but I like to take my flipping and then use it to fund my buy and hold. But one of the things I learned the hard way in, in the buy and hold was having, this may seem, you know, duh, but you know, having a property manager, but not just a property manager, the right one. Um, I had a property manager quit on me with three weeks notice. Oh. And I had a, a bushel full of properties 
that I couldn't get to anymore because I'm busy, you know, with Think and 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 River of Refuge and life, you know. Mm-hmm. And but here's the problem: I had to self-manage with no notice, and I had no other property manager lined up to move my portfolio to within a two to three week notice. So the lesson I learned was spread the love. In other words, don't put all of your portfolio with one property manager. Mm-hmm. Um, let them know that you don't have my whole portfolio. You've got a part of it. And, and that keeps both managers on their toes. And if anybody goes sideways on you, you can just quickly move your portfolio over to the other side and, and then, you know, keep going. Uh, it was a big disruption to my cash flow and almost put sure. me out of business. Sure. Wow, that's incredible. So, so what are some tips that you could give somebody on finding a good property manager? Because we've had, um, well, last week we had Michael Jordan. That's that was on our podcast. You know, Mike oh, um, out of Detroit. I love Michael. <laughs> yeah, he's such an awesome human being. Um, I love him. But yeah, we had him on, and he talked about the importance of a property manager because he's got over. Um, he said now almost a thousand properties yeah. that are under management. So he dwarfs. He dwarfs my <laughs> what I hold. Sure. You know? <laughs> but 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 it's the same thing. Is that like the staple for that is a good, not just a property manager, a good yeah. one. So. Good one. What would you what would you recommend for somebody to find a good property manager? Like, what do you look for when you're actually looking for a property manager? Yeah, well, they're always going to they're all going to tell you the same thing that they know what everybody's looking for. So you're going to hear the same wah 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 wah, right? So they all know what to say to sell their company. You've got to dig deeper than what they say. So you've got to find out from the actual tenants they serve: are they responsive? to maintenance requests. Hmm. What does that process look like from beginning of request to end of request? Not from their perspective, from the end user's perspective. Interesting. That's really important. You're looking for inconsistencies. Gotcha. Um, and then there's the cost of dispatching for repairs. You need to find out from your property manager if they have an in-house person that negotiates contracts for HVAC on behalf of all of their clients, meaning me, or are they just getting out the yellow pages and calling whoever they can find? And I'm paying high end prices for, you know, uh, simple repairs. These are things that you got to dig a little deeper and find out more of the internal structure of who are they doing business with and how do they do business, not just their sales pitch. Gotcha. Absolutely. That uh, some very valuable information there. And like I said, we've had multiple people talk about the importance of not just property management, but a good property management for your portfolio. So that's yeah. highly important. And currently I just onboarded to my third property manager and that's I'm right now today onboarded to renter's warehouse mm-hmm. and I've been very happy. They've got a branch here in Kansas city sure. and we're off to a really great start. I love their processes, their follow through. And uh, right at this point in time, I'd give him a thumbs up. That's good. Yeah, we, we love Renters Warehouse over there. We've had Noel on the on the podcast uh, actually a couple of times now. So um, great human being. But anyway, okay, so so great stuff. Now let's do another uh, track shift here. So we're okay. going to get into loving your enemies and looking at your competitors in a different light. This was an absolutely incredible talk that – um, John gave us at our mastermind in November. And it was so good that I know right away, I'm like, man, I need to get him on the podcast, to talk about this and go like a little deeper into it. So specifically for you guys, cause it was just absolutely, it, 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 it sheds a different light on it because you always hear, love your enemies, love your enemies, but then you don't translate, you, pr- you translate that from personal, but not to business. So right. that's kind of the whole scenario here. So I'm just going to let you take it. You have, you have your notes there. And you talk about it. So I, I might I might sneak in a couple questions here and there, but for you, you go ahead and just do your thing. So okay. love your enemies. Let's hear it. <laughs> well, the challenge with love your enemies is we've all heard it uh, and we agree with it. Oh, yes, I agree with it. But then the, the implementation or living that out in the day-to-day life, we don't realize at all, we don't do it intentionally, that we've gapped. We're, we're not doing it. So first, you know, I'm going to go introspective. Like we have to examine our own inside in order to, if you can find out what's going on inside with you, then it's easy to notice the outside. Does what I do externally match what I say I believe internally? And if it doesn't, why not? Right? So, so let's just, I'm going to speak not at everybody, like to you. I'm going to speak, I'm going to start by speaking about my own self, right? My own self-examination 
that led me to these observations that caused me some course correction, which now I freely share from life experience. So um, I, I, I'll start it out by saying, I had to be honest with myself and admit that the real enemy I had was the enemy within myself that I realized that in order to be successful, I felt like I needed to have an enemy to resist. Hmm. That you think of the sports model, right? You know, you know, you, you, we're going to kill them. We're going to crush them. You know, that was my motivation. You know, you're going to have something to resist. And, you know, that, that statement, love your enemies is, you know, famous and uh, attributed to, you know, Jesus's command. And so what we tend to do is we'll hear that command, love your enemy. And we all agree that we should, but here's where we've misinterpreted it, in my opinion, is we assume that when he says, love your enemy, that we must now go out and find an enemy. In other words, let's figure out who our enemies are. Let's label them, quantify them. And we'll do that by figuring out who's my competitor, who are my enemies. And when we start making the list and trying to figure out who our enemies are, really, we've missed the whole spirit of what was being said. What I think he was really trying to say, and this became a revelation to me, was live life in such a way that you don't have enemies, that there's nothing to resist, which there's other verses that back that up, you know, turn the other cheek. When someone asks for your coat, give them your cloak as well. In other words, there's other scriptures that back up this interpretation of love your enemies Enemies means live from your heart as if there isn't a person to resist. Um, so let's talk about our culture for a minute. Let's look about our politics. Um, and uh, did, I, did I lose you? No, you're good. I'm here. Okay. Uh, something <laughs> popped up on my screen. <laughs> no, okay, I'm good. There. I'm just there. listening intently. <laughs> I'm okay. ready, man. Well, you know, I, I don't want to go too deep into politics, but let, our American culture right now is so divisive that we've lost the art of listening to each other and respectfully disagreeing. We're to the point now, if someone doesn't believe what I believe, by default, they're my enemy and I must resist them. Whole movements in the U.S. right now are based on and centered on uh, who on resisting each other and having somebody to fight. And he who can scream the loudest and get the most people behind them wins the battle. And if, if this is happening internally, you know, and in political, and by the way, being a pastor for 30 years, it happens in the church world as well, you know, denominationally speaking. So let's think about it. If it's happening in me and it's happening in politics, I mean, good grief, look at our politics, right? And then it's happening in our spiritual communities, Christian and non-Christian, uh, depending on whatever your flavor is, this who's my enemy, who's resisting, who doesn't believe right, think right, who needs to be converted to my way of believing, all of that, right, mm -hmm. where we're quantifying. What that means is we're fooling ourselves if we don't think it also, it, it doesn't drift down into our business practices inside of our companies. So it's in me, it's in our ethos of our po politics, it's in our churches, but not in my business. Right. <laughs> It's in the business as well. So getting down to business, and that's what I shared at the, at the uh, Good Success Mastermind, is when, when a company's culture um, has to have a competitor in order to keep your sales elevated, you're probably operating from an unhealthy position. You're spending resources. Imagine how much political capital is spent in the United States just fighting each other like in ads and politics, you know, like ads on TV, yeah. like uh, rallies and marches and all of that, billions of dollars is spent. What else could we do with that money if it wasn't, if we actually spend it listening and solving problems rather than resisting each other? Yeah. Now drive that down into your business. So when your company culture has to have a competitor to crush, you're, you're operating from an adversarial view. Let's go crush our competitor. So what, I, what I'm advocating is, your ability, when you're spending company resources, emotional capital, company cash, uh, your, the ethos of your company, your culture, when you're spending that kind of energy, you are, you're taking your, you're losing your ability to discern the market. Your ability to respond to the people you're serving, I think is in jeopardy because your resources are spent on resisting your competitor rather than creative problem solving. 
Um, you, if you shifted to the point where you saw your competitors as in the same space that you're in, facing the same problems that you're in, and they're human beings just like you, and that if they rise in some level of success within your industry, then the industry is bolstered and you rise with them, which is foreign thinking. Yeah. We are one human family, one human family. And the, to, the basis of needing an enemy to resist in business, we got to peel the onion back a little bit. Because um, there's probably some people already going, oh my gosh, he's off his rocker, right? Like, I, I have to acknowledge my competitors. I have to know what they're doing. I'm not saying don't act as if you don't have a competitor because you do. It's how you hold them in your heart and what you do or don't do with that awareness. But let's peel the onion back a little bit deeper. Let's get, uh, it's going to get a little philosophical for a minute and then I'll bring it to more of a easy to put it into daily life. So let's do, dig down a little bit deeper. So where does the basis of needing enemies to resist in business even come from, right? Why do, why? I believe it comes from a worldview of limited resources. Think about how many wars have been fought in world history over limited, the, the belief of limited resources, meaning there's not enough to go around. Think about, it's human history is yeah. littered with the dark side of that view. There's not enough to go around. And we justify all manner of difficulty and evil yeah. under, the, under the guise of there's not enough to go around. So when the idea in your core business is there's not enough customers, there's not enough houses to flip, there's not enough commission to go around, there's not enough this or whatever, whatever space you're in, when you, when you believe that there's not enough, then you give birth to your enemies by default because you believe that you've got to fight to get and you've got to push them down to get what you think you need just to survive. Mm -hmm. So you, when we live like this, then we need to create winners and losers. It really, it's a, it's a paradigm or a view of lack. When, when lack exists in your frame of thinking, not enough to go around, then you give birth and you manifest your enemies and now the fight is on. And we give birth to our own need to fight. Now, in truth, whatever you want to call it, God, the universe, life, whatever flavor of view you take, in truth, I'm going to make a statement of truth across spiritual spectrums of understanding or belief. Here's a truth about what I've observed being here, right? In truth, there is a never-ending supply of untapped resources, always available for those who are willing to align their worldview and understand that think, think how many people have had breakthrough inventions or shifts in understanding of the market when they stopped fighting the person across the table from them and instead sought to understand what was going on in the market, yeah. listen to the need of the person they're trying to serve and creatively solve the gap. Yep. They get breakthrough inventions and technology disruptions. And now the, the, the community responds when you're, provi when you're providing an added value then your boat rises. So imagine if you could have some groundbreaking solution that creates wealth and freedom, that heart, and you can take that energy that you were spending resisting people and instead spend those resources in creativity, asking yourself different questions. Where's the gap? How can I solve it? Which goes back to the podcast I said I'd like to come back to. How do you even notice the gaps? Yeah. How, what is that? How do you even get to that place? In order to create, you know, solve the gaps and get away from resisting, you've got to be willing to lay down the fight and start spending capital and resources on creative problem solving and seeing that as your highest call, yeah. you know, yeah. not just winning the game. So imagine, imagine being able to spend extra time and, and extra resources creatively re solving problems with nobody left to fight right? Your enemies kind of go away and people enjoy your, enjoy your culture more. I've even been in cultures where salespeople fight with each other because the company fights with their competitors. You're, if, if, if there's a fighting culture inside of a company, I guarantee you that, say, that company's also got the same worldview of their competitors and 
even sometimes of their customers. And I learned that the hard way. I was facing a bunch of evictions one time due to mismanagement of my property manager. And I was facing like six or seven evictions all at one time, which was a lot for me at that time. And I remember catching myself seeing my tenants as my enemy. And that's when I went, oh, whoa, 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 that goes cross grain against everything I know to be true. There's plenty of resources and creative ways to solve this problem with my tenants. If I'll just stop resisting them, put myself in their shoes, ask better questions. And you know, I was able to solve that problem creatively and uh, saved me thousands of dollars. And uh, I, uh, that's a topic for another time, but that's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. I'll let you fire any questions, clarification. Um, yeah, buts or, no, or that, whatever. I, I hope that gave you what you were looking for. No, absolutely. That was fantastic. So one thing that I was actually going to mention is it, a lot of people don't think about the difference between a scarcity mindset and a, an abundance mindset. That's yeah. they're, they're, they're total opposites. And just from what I've seen and heard other people say as well, you're either one or the other. There's, there's kind of an in-between, but like it, it, at, the, at the end of the day, you either have a scarcity mindset or you have an abundance mindset. Gosh, and, let, me, let, me, let me agree with you. Howard, let <laughs> okay. me bring, let me, but let me bring what you're saying into balance yes. or to fairness. We all drift in and out of those two mindsets yeah. throughout the day. Yeah. It's not like you're either one or you are the other. I would say you drift daily from yeah. one to the other and it's learning to catch yourself when you've drifted and know how to do course correction in mid-flight yeah. that because i don't I, I just don't see us ever getting free of of that tension it's uh, and, it, and it you just said it too it's you have to be very conscious of it because it for some reason maybe it's just the way god made us but it's very natural for us to have a scarcity mindset it, it really is. I mean, even down, you said like sales, salespeople, like going at each other, like th just having that mindset of scarcity that there's not enough customers to go around with people. And yes. it, that's, that happens in the workplace, like internally very often for people, especially with larger businesses that you notice. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's family too. Like if you're in a family and you know, you're maybe one family member spending more time with the other. And then you're like, oh, you know, I don't like that person there, <laughs> you know, and then it just creates family drama, that kind of thing. It's it, business and personal and spiritual and politics. It's everything. All the above. So now let's circle back real quick. Let's, let's go back to my opening statement or my interpretation of love your enemy. If we can now, after I've gone through the whole talk, think this way, imagine your daily life where you walk around with no one to resist. Yes right? Yeah. Really imagine that. And that there's no fight to fight. There's only creative opportunities to solve. And, and now you make what, who was going to be your enemy, your friend, and you're solving problems together. Yeah. This is why Jesus said, Hey, if you've got problems with somebody, you're on your way to court, go settle with them quickly. In other words, go work it out, man. Mm -hmm. So imagine living life in a way where I don't see a Democrat or a Republican or an independent as my enemy. They're a human being with a perspective. And they have value and, and, and worth, and they're worth getting to know. And imagine that in business or whatever it is, but see life in a way where here we all are. We're one human family. There's nothing to fight. You know? uh, yeah, absolutely. I love that. And the, and the thought too, that I, while you were giving this talk at the mastermind, I kind of was racking my brain like, okay, what are some scenarios I can think of that this really holds true? And the first thing I thought of was like, for instance, let's take the founders of Airbnb. Like it, it, we're in real estate, right? If they yeah. had this mindset of just scarcity and they were always the, the hotels or their competitors, they're going to try to figure out how to beat the hotels and dr drown them out and that kind of thing. Instead, they found, they, they noticed they noticed what, what people were like, it, it high hotel costs. It's, you know, difficult and people like to, you know, short term rent, rentals are coming up and surfacing. And so Airbnb created Airbnb instead of just going after their enemies, they created a solution for other people noticed right. and then created, this, they acted like we said, they noticed and then acted. And yes. now, I, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what's happening like in the U S but uh, you know, I was in Iceland last month and I even noticed that a lot of the hotels there are listing on Airbnb's website now. So I thought that was interesting. So they're actually <laughs> listing their hotel rooms on Airbnb. So they're collaborating, you know, it's, <laughs> there's an abundance mindset there. 
So I thought that was really interesting. But anyway, well, awesome stuff, man. I appreciate that. Uh, Oh, actually, one more thing was creative. You you talked about creative problem solving like this. When you have a scarcity mindset that 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 blocks your creative thinking to create solutions for your business, that kind of thing. Um, You skimmed over a little bit just now. But can you go a little bit deeper into why that happens? Like, why is it why? Why does our creative? Why does it create a mental block for us with our creativity to create solutions when you have a "that's my competitor" type mindset and I gotta beat him and you know I I walk over him and you know that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a great question. Uh, I'd want to noodle on that for a while. I, in other <laughs> words, I can, I can, I can offer an off the cuff answer like intuitively. Yeah. Like where does it come from? Uh, I can't say I've studied it out a whole lot, um, but. You know, I, it, it, it comes from, um, so frame the question for me one more time. So creative thinking, when, it, when yeah. a company gets together and they're thinking, oh, we, this is our competitor, we gotta beat them in this way, shape or form. So for instance, yeah. if Good Success got together and said, hey, there's another mastermind out there, how do we beat them? What are they doing that we're not doing? What are, you know, that kind of thing. We, we gotta yeah. take their customers. So why does that prevent creative problem solving for a business? There's because you're violating a principle of life and you can't get around it. And that principle is this, that which you seek to have own or steward over or to enjoy seek first to give that away, Hmm. not, not go destroy someone else. Meaning let's make this simple. Let me take what I just said and let's make it really simple to understand. If you need a friend or friends, the best way to attract friends is to first seek to be what? A friend. Friendly. Just generally be friendly out in public, be nice, and you will attract friendly people, right? You you want to be a jerk, you you know, give that away, you're gonna get that back. Right. So so that's that's why I think we violate when when we want to be creative, but yet we're not giving away creativity, we're we're resisting. We're disrupting our ability to be creative. So in other words, you can't do, you can't seek to both destroy and create simultaneously. The, the reason we have a left mm. is because there's a right. Wow. We have top because there's down. We, you know, we have up because there's down, I should say. Um, you know, this planet exists where it does in the solar system because it's a certain distance away from, you know, the sun. I mean, there's, there's, there's a, 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 in this world of form, you're going to you're going to go one way or the other right you can't you can't go both ways the sun and the earth don't live together in the same place right, right? there you got to there's a separation so i believe that when we have enemies to fight it blocks our ability to be creative and to have problem solve problem solving abilities if that makes sense at all absolutely being, being philosophical here but i'm trying to be practical it's about spending resources right? The, the capital you have to be creative gets spent on being creative. How, how, have you ever spent time, and I know I have, so I'll be the first to raise my hand because I already know what I'm about to ask, right? Imagining what it would be like, I'm going to tell so-and-so what I really think, and then you imagine the whole conversation. Yeah. Or I'm going to tell that police officer what I think when he pulls me over, or that judge, or my boss, or this, or that, right? And you spend all of that emotional capital imagining your body tenses up, you get your, you know, your blood vessels are like exploding in your head, you got stress in your shoulders, and then you're going to sit down and be creative. I don't think so. Right. Creativity comes our art and art flow and creativity come from a place of peace of, of a sense of oneness. I believe with humanity and creation and being, you know, grounded in what God has given us here and feeling a flow of giving and generosity it gives birth to creativity. Sure. And, and I think it, it, the one statement you said that kind of makes sense. And it's, it's the basic principle here that we're really talking about. That's just, it, it's the breakthrough in everything that you're doing. You can't seek to create if you destroy. That, that's They're that's it in a nut, nutshell. Like, <laughs> think about it. You can't go left if you're going right. Right. You know, it's like they don't, it's not possible to do both simultaneously. It's going to be one or the other. Yeah. And I think it's, and you even said it at the beginning, it's this whole topic is just very convoluted in today's society. I mean, 
you said you use the example look at sports like sports specifically you have a competitor and in order to win you have to beat them and that's kind of like and and you know i'm I don't, i'm sure you're not i'm not against sports like i love sports and, and that kind of thing but it's the principle that comes behind it of the why. people translate that to everyday life no matter what yes. they're doing you said yes. politics spiritual personal business that's what it translates into and yeah. people got to think differently <laughs> absolutely well awesome stuff i think that's gonna do it for today's episode but we got two more questions that i did not prepare you for because we we ask every single interviewee that we get on the show here um and like i said man i appreciate you being on and sharing all this with us we'll have you back on to talk about learning to notice and i'm excited about that one that's gonna be a good yes. one um but before we let you go we got two more questions that we ask every single interviewee and i'm excited to hear your answer so you've known us for a little bit of while good success me and tom and and the rest of the crew and you know what we stand for. You know what we're about. And you've been to our group. We've we've talked to you several times. You've talked to Tom. You've interviewed him a couple times. And when it comes to good success, good success means a lot to us. Just that statement it comes from the Bible. Joshua 1.8 it talks about the type of success as opposed to, so the, the quality as opposed to the quantity. When you hear the term good success, what does that mean to you? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? So for me, for me personally, Good success, I gauge it by one overarching question I hold to my own heart is, did I contribute today? Mm -hmm. Did I contribute? Did I, did I give away today and give value to someone else? You know, like, and it could be personal, family, business, but for me, good success, I've, I've, I'm here fulfilling my, my reason to have my reason for being here is to experience what it's like to be here. Yeah. That's why I, I, I'm here, right? Mm -hmm. I, he created me to be here to have an experience. So good success is for me to experience what it means to add value, to add value to think realty, to add value to the tenants who I serve, to add value to the neighborhood where there's this trashed out house that I buy and turn it into a greater value for the neighborhood. All of those are points of contribution for me uh with my grandchildren and all the above but so for me it's did i contribute today did i add value to somebody else's life that's such a good question so i'm gonna apply that to my life now every every night before i go to bed did i contribute today i always wake up and, and you know this i'm not trying to toot my own horn here but i always wake up every single morning the first thing that i do is i have a journal that I write down three things that I'm grateful for. It doesn't matter if it's the pen I'm holding or the notebook I'm writing in. It doesn't, the, the covers that I just got out of out of bed, three things that I'm grateful for every single day. And now when I'm going to bed, I'm gonna ask, did I contribute today? That's a great question. So ask your guys, ask yourself that uh, for you guys. So, um, and then the last thing here, you gotta leave the audience with one thing. So whether it's a quote, a thought, piece of advice, I know you've already given tons of nuggets. I've got like so many quotes written down here. Emily's gonna have to listen to this podcast and get a lot of uh, quotes out of this, but you gotta leave one thing with the audience. What would that be? Your enemy is the enemy within you that has to have an enemy to resist. That's your real enemy. And if you can control the enemy within, meaning your need to have something to resist, you will win the battle. You'll stop fighting and struggling. You're your own enemy. That's, that's the whole thing. That's, that's the paradigm. I don't have, they're not my problem. I'm my own problem. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the nugget. Perfection. Love it. And that does it for today's episode, man. What a great interview, John. We appreciate you joining us and being on the podcast today, allowing us to interview you and pick your mind. Um, like, like I said at the beginning, just so much wisdom that was shared here. So you guys make sure you take this and, and act on it. And that, that was one of the things that we even talked about with noticing you got to notice and then act. And we notice competitors, man, they're love them, love them. They're not your enemies. And that's uh, the whole message here. So John, we appreciate you sharing that with us. We look forward to having you back soon and, yep. um, you take care. Have a great Thanksgiving. Oh, well, this is going to air after Thanksgiving, but we I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. <laughs> let's, let's thankful lives. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, that is going to do it for today's episode. Hey, John, one more thing. If somebody wanted to contact you, get a hold of you, maybe learn more about think realty, what would be the best uh, way for them to do that? Oh, well, uh, they could email me and if they'll just email me at J Wiley and Wiley is spelled W I L E Y. So J Wiley at thinkrealty.com. That'll get straight to my inbox and I respond to everybody who emails. Perfect. 
And um, also, of course, you guys can visit Think Realty's website, thinkrealty.com. We're big partners with them. We go to all their events, like I said at the beginning. So you guys definitely need to check them out if you have not. Um, a lot of great stuff. So that's going to do it for today's episode. We appreciate you jumping on. And if you haven't already, make sure you have subscribed to the Good Success Podcast. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, all the podcast platforms. Just go there, search Good Success leave a subscription there. And then if you guys can leave a review for us, we would love to hear your feedback on these podcasts. And if you guys could suggest anything for us, we're totally open to that. And then the Good Success Mastermind, the next event is February 4th through 8th in Dallas, Texas at Quest Trust Company's office down there. We're very excited about it. Very excited. Possibly have John back. Hopefully if I can convince Eddie to get to bring you back, that'd be awesome. <laughs> we even talked about that at the beginning here. I, got, I have to reach out to Eddie and make sure I ask him to bring John back. But anyways, you you guys can learn more about that at goodsuccess.com slash mastermind. We do have you fill out an application there and then you'll talk to either myself or Tom and we'll go from there. And then the active turnkey book, these are almost out. So make sure you take advantage of this. This is absolutely free. All you got to do is pay for shipping and handling costs, which is a minimal fee for what you're going to be getting out of this book. So you could pick yours up at atkbook.com. And uh, this is the best way to buy rentals this is the subtitle for this book written by Tom Olson, president of good success himself. So make sure you guys take advantage of that. One more time, it's atkbook.com. That's gonna do it for today's episode. We appreciate you joining on. Remember to be a conduit, not a bucket, and work to have to give. Catch you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for listening to this Good Success Podcast episode. Make sure to subscribe to us. We're on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Anchor, or Spotify, any one of those platforms, however you like to listen to your podcast. Make sure you subscribe. And just a quick reminder to go pick up your free copy of the Active Turnkey book. It's absolutely free. Just cover the shipping costs and we'll pay for the book. Just head over to goodsuccess.com slash ATK book. Again, that's goodsuccess.com slash ATK book. And you can pick up the book there. So make sure you go do that. Thank you for listening. And remember to be a conduit, not a bucket.